Hi everyone, so I just had a class with some people through the Facebook group and I wanted to show you, this is the um, uh, sandwich pour that, we, that we've done, and I've done. Um, I'm going to do, didn't record it, so I'm going to now do a, another one and show you how it's done. Okay, so today I'm using Amsterdam paints. And I've mixed them uh, one part paint to two parts float troll. Put the lid on the float troll for us to try and show you, show you. Okay. So you want the paint to be running off the stick maybe just making a very small mound and leaving a small trail. If you're using thinner paints, you might end up having to do it one-to-one -one paint mixture, like the DecoArt sort of, I've used, done some with DecoArt Extreme Sheen, very th much thinner paint. You need to obviously match it to, to do that, to make that side. Uh, okay, so the colors today that I'm using, I'm using the, my favorite color, which is Prussian Blue. I've also got the Azo Orange, which I was a bit worried about using, but it's actually worked really well because when these two go together, they seem to make just a real, uh, and it uh, um, tones it down a bit. And then the other colour, which is the Turquoise Green. And what I think I found in this pool, when these two go together, it makes a really beautiful darker teal. And then I've got the white. So I'm going to reuse my a cup that I've just had. So what we do in the, in the sandwich pour, it is really sandwiching colours between, in this case, case white. So I'm putting a, a amount, good amount of white in the bottom, maybe an inch or more. I'm then going to layer the cups. Now, you do want it layered on top a bit. So Rather than pouring it in, I'm just going to use my stick to put it on, just so that it stays on top. The other ha other half couple I have, um, I actually poured it in, and it'll be interesting to see how much thicker that one comes out. You don't need a lot of the colour. I'm just dribbling it on so that there's basically a small a small layer over the other one. So I'm just using these three colours today with the white. Now I'm going to put more white, so I'm putting white colours, white colours, white, basically. So if, if the white's thinking about the white as a layer of bread, it's a, maybe it's a club sandwich or something with uh, an extra layer of uh, bread in the middle. Now you can do that or you can just pour onto your stick and see it go, have it, which just stops at the velocity of which it's it's hitting so that it might actually stay on top rather than sink down quite so much. Okay, so then I'm going to go again. I like the way that the colours worked in that first ball, so I'm just going to stick with the same order of colours. You can mix them up, you can do what you like. Oh, I did like the blue and the green where they touch, so I purposely left a bit of a gap there to try and get them get them touching together. I think for that reason, I'm going to put a little bit more blue here. I just like really like those two colours together. Okay, and then so that was the second layer, wasn't it? I didn't put as much white in between this one. Okay, so I have my other cup here from last time, which I just used a little bit out of. I made a second white cape in case I needed it. But I need to just put a bit more white on top of that, I think. And that will be plenty for this, for this canvas. Okay, so the other thing about the sandwich pour, you need to decide which direction you're pouring in. Because the thing is you get some lovely lines coming back and forth. 
So other ones I've done, I've, I've done them on the diagonal like this. This one I'm just going to do it the same. This is a 14 by 14 canvas. So I'm just going to pour them, pour it straight. Some I've seen some beautiful ones, and I must do one where you might start with a, like a black here and a white here and just have the, the colours uh, mixing in the middle. But for now, we're, um, we're right to go. All right, so I'm going to start right on the edge so that it actually dribbles down a bit. And that's obviously just white coming out there. And here come the colours. Now you can go back again over the white and get more colour in there if you want it. So what we're seeing is lots of lovely little cells appearing and we're still getting interesting lines of colour. Now, I just went up a bit and then and um, back and forth. You don't really want to go back and forth. You really want to just go in a straight line. We don't, I prefer not to have sort of wonky lines on this, on this style. So I'll just let the cup that run out there for a minute. Again, we're going to have more white here. So I just that's where I started. But the colours will come soon. And we can always go back over again if we want to. Now we're getting much more colour here because this was where I had gone thicker with the colour. And again, when you finish off, try and get it so that it's going on the edge so that it will pour over the edge. Uh, and whilst normally when you stretch your canvas, you pour and you, you tilt it in all directions, in this one you don't really want to because that's how you're going to get the, the wonky lines. Okay, so in tilting, I'm going to tilt this way and this way, I'm going to follow the same directions of the lines, which is just going to continue. Just want to make sure all the paint's over the edge. So you don't, you don't really want to leave it too much of a gap on the edge because you want it to, like there, you just want it to all be running. So if, if it needs a little bit of a help to run, then you can do that. Okay. So you just want to make it to the right level of the paint on the canvas. Now clearly because you're tipping off to the sides, the sides should be covered nicely, although in this, though I can see one, this one isn't, um, in, some, in some places, haven't quite gone enough. But you might have to work on your ends. And I tend to use something that has a flat edge like this that I can sort of scoop up paint. Now this is quite dark here. Um, I want to find some darker paint. There's not too much around. Pick up some paint from the other side and I'm just um, I'm just going to hold hold my paint there at the top and then just gradually let it run down so you're still getting the lines as if it had run off the canvas. So, good lines. I, I don't know if you can see this these wobbly bits here. I'm going to be very careful because I don't want to create other wob other lines. But I'm just going to slowly, going side to side, move the paint down towards me a little bit. And they don't have to be perfectly straight lines, but I just want to get a little bit more of the weight of the canvas. If I just quickly got just gone and tilted it. Then I would be, I'm just going back a little bit now too. If I'd just gone and tilted it up like this, then all the lines would have run down. I was just trying to get a few of these little funny edges off and I've got enough of them off for me to be happy with that. Okay, I'll just clean my hands and I'll show you. about the camera ring it normally doesn't show in this device but it is today so you're close up 
I'm really pleased that the orange isn't too much. It just gives a little cut of colour and you can see a more browny colour where it's blended. So that's good. I was a bit worried about it. I look forward to putting them side by side. I think this one looks a little bit more white than the other one. Not know until I do it, do it, put them together. But you do just get these interesting little cells and little mixtures of colours. So I hope that's helpful and um, hopefully you can do a sandwich pour and let me know how it goes.